Good morning, super. Okay, this is James Park. I am um, recording from the field today. Uh, I'm in Manhattan. I've been asked to come to one of our buildings because there's a there's a, a, a water leak, uh, a persistent water leak in one of the units, and I've been called in to assist. So I thought that this would be a great time to actually um, bring you along and to go through this process with you. The troubleshooting process is probably the, the culmination or the the highest value that you can provide to a building one of the highest value that you can provide to a building as a superintendent um, as an RM of course and especially as a part-time super um, it's it's one of the most critical uh, valuable uh, uh, services that you can provide so the the more effective you are as a troubleshooter means that you will save the building that much more money in doing the right repairs and uh, mitigating damages that occur inside the units or to the building. You're also narrowing down the issue uh, for, let's say, an expert to come, a professional to come to fix the actual problem. You're, you're narrowing that down and locating the specific source. And that will save time um, in the cost that's accrued if you bring in licensed um, professional you know their, their charges are most likely going to be much higher than what you're charging so um, to be able to give that to the building um, to be able to narrow the the problem for them and find the find the source of the issue and whether you give it to the professional whether you fix it yourself that's extremely uh, a, a huge potentially huge cost saving for the building so uh, you're doing a huge service for the building. Of course, we've talked about um, additional income that you can make, which is great additional income. You can charge um, a very good rate, probably higher than whatever you charge for other things uh, for troubleshooting because it is really is a, a, a valuable uh, skill that you have. And I think any building um, that has a great troubleshooter um, on its team is able to look back and, and probably pull out very easily all of the things that um, the building it has saved through um, having a, an effective um, troubleshooter on staff. And uh, for Super, once again, um, this is one of the most valuable critical tasks. I say it again and again, and I apologize, but uh, it really is um, uh, something that I also, uh, when I'm working with my team members, I'm looking for a effective um, troubleshooters. It takes a long time to build up that knowledge, collective knowledge, comprehensive knowledge, which means knowledge from all these different areas, plumbing, electrical, building structure, building equipment, uh, and you're able to, the use of tools and, you know, all of that come together into uh, the process of troubleshooting. So it's, it's a thinking process. And a lot of part-time supersets coming into this industry will ask, okay, so what's the process of troubleshooting? There is actually a, an actionable list, an item list that you can go down, like a checkbox. Um, you know, but part each each item on that checklist is very rich with, uh, with things that you can learn or you should learn to become more effective. But troubleshooting is the process of trying to find, uh, locate the source of a problem. Right. So one important thing that you should um, recognize in that statement is that it's a process. Um, it's a process of elimination. And sometimes it's a simple troubleshooting, a simple process, um, problem solving. But at other times it can be pretty difficult. Um, like in this case that I'm going to, two um, sets of professional plumbers came by to, to take a look at what could be the issue. They troubleshooted. And then they uh, left, assuming that it was fixed. But uh, lo and behold, um, a, a few days later, we had the issue occur again. So, you know, it's a process. And then you go back there, and then you try to try to uh, um, 
go over the process again. So we're going to go through that right now. Uh, whenever you called in to help troubleshoot something, you're going in, uh, you're being informed about a symptom. A symptom meaning uh, the physical appearance of a problem, right? You, you're you're, you're going to get a resident, a shareholder that calls in and says that they see something that's wrong, right? They see that there's damage on the walls. They see that there's water damage. They see that something's... Um, something's broken, they see water dripping. And I'm using a water leak because this is a water leak here, but it could be a, a electrical issue, it could be a, um, you know, it could be a host of other other problems, but I'm just using a water, water leak as an example. They're gonna tell you about the symptom that they're experiencing. The first step is um, you're going to verify those symptoms. You're gonna to try to uh, go there and you're going to see where the problem occurs. You're going to put together a story, a narrative um, uh, that explains how that problem is happening. So obviously the more you know about um, a building, the more you know about what happens inside the walls of a building, how the pipes are shaped, the better you're going to be able to tell the story. Right. So it really takes experience and you may be able to pull up pull out of your memory prior uh, experiences, bringing up past experiences um, to help you guide, help guide your troubleshooting process. So in this process, you're going to determine what the symptoms are. Then you're going to, uh, number two, identify all the possible um, sources that could be causing this. If it's a water leak, um, there could be a few different sources, right? You're going to be looking at the bathroom, if it's a bathroom area. You're going to be looking at whether it's a toilet, the bathtub, the water, the the, uh, the basin. It's, it's often an area where you have leaks. Uh, you may be looking at plumbing, but you may also may be looking at caulking, whether there's enough caulking around the bathtub. Caulking is the thing that seals the water from um, going into the walls. And sometimes when that's come apart, uh, that's where water can go in. You're gonna be looking at different areas and then you may even be looking at uh, the kitchen you know if the kitchen is nearby but it's really important that you understand how to look with x-ray vision through the walls try to guess where this stuff where, where this water is coming from by looking at the placement of the various fixtures in the apartment most likely you'll have to go into the apartment upstairs as a first step in the solution so there's there's a lot of things you may have to know how if there's other bathrooms nearby upstairs or you know you're gonna to have to see whether there's water maybe coming penetrating in from the outside sometimes it's pointing or the the mortar between the bricks are bad and sometimes the water comes in and 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 because uh, things are deter deteriorated brick is deteriorated it may enter into the apartment and into the into the cavity of the building and into the apartment into the um, the apartment so there could be a couple different issues so basically you're going to be identifying part two is identifying all these issues and then you're going to be prioritizing you're going to be prioritizing um, which where it could be most likely coming from so it's going to be a list of most likely uh, sources once you create that you're ready to move on to the next stage So the first thing you'll do is um, take a look and verify the symptoms. Um, you can take a look around to see if you can identify the sources. You may have to go into the apartment upstairs. Uh, you may have to see if the next door, there's any back-to-back uh, -back bathrooms or fixtures that could be causing this. Back-to-back -back meaning um, there's a uh, sometimes two different apartments have a bathroom on one side and a bathroom on the other, although they're different apartments. And you're gonna have to, they sometimes share the same uh, drain stack or the same supply line. And there's a, a space in between the apartments. So sometimes water can come into that space and it can maybe leap over from one, one, one apartment line to the other. So one line, one apartment is on one line let's say the B line, and one apartment is on the A line, a different line. So they may cross lines. So there's a couple of things that uh, we should we should look at, but um, when you're identifying these sources, you're gonna wanna pull up that information 
and you, you're going to want to know where the apartments are. Um, you're going to want to know where uh, the, ne the nearest bathrooms are or the nearest water water sources. With, you know, water sources meaning it's a bathroom, it's a kitchen. It may be in that apartment or in that line, but it may be in a different line. You may also want to talk to the shareholders or the residents, um, maybe above or in the other apartments, to ask whether they use the fixture, uh, use any anything recently, like have they used the toilet, whether they took a shower recently, whether they took a bath, and what they did, you know, like whether they they um, they spilled water. Sometimes you could get your whole troubleshooting could get thwarted by um, having someone mistakenly overflowed the bathtub overflowed the sink we just had that today but uh, or i just got a call for that today and we we troubleshooted remotely and found out that he had accidentally run his uh sink over but those are the things that you want to uh you want to research you also want to research if it could be rain and it could you know it could be rain penetrating in from the outside you may also want to consider whether um it rained in the last couple of days or yesterday or something because one of the tough things about water leak and you learn this by experience is that water travels in all these different mysterious ways and they'll show up hours after that water uh, came into that area so it'll throw you off you'll think that that water came down directly and someone just took a shower or someone used the fixture and then you someone got the water uh, below so you think that it's it's happening at the same time or roughly around the same time but it may not be it may be that someone took a shower hours earlier and it took time for that water to penetrate part of your uh pro the process of identifying the possible causes of this you may have to open up that that part of the wall or ceiling to get a better i better look at what's inside of it and that's part of identifying the causes because once you open the open the wall and ceiling, you may have a better idea of what's happening behind the wall, where that water is coming from, how is it coming down, whether there's things that are blocking that water or pushing that water or manipulating that water this way or that because that will help you to determine whether you're on the right track or whether you're on the wrong track. You could be on the wrong track because water may be coming up or or manifesting or appearing over here the symptoms may be on this side but the cause may be on this side all the way down this side so you have to be you know you just have to look at everything so they're all you know when you're a part-time super in a in a smaller building you have a larger role to play something you don't have a building manager to help you you have to sort of be proactive in trying to make your um, troubleshooting as effective as possible. So you're going to be the person that goes out and contacts all the shareholders who may be involved. And then you have to coordinate them to get you access into those apartments, assuming you don't have a key to get inside and permission. You may have to um, coordinate the access into the apartments, get the keys ready to go inside. So. There's going to be some administrative activity that you have to do, you know, once you once you're ready to go. Well, let's take a step back. So you've told the uh, residents that you need access. You probably have to field a lot of questions about what's going on because they'll be pretty, pretty nervous or anxious. By the way, I just want to say before I forget, if anyone asks you um, what the issue is, just refrain from from telling them uh, what the issue is. You found the problem, even if you did, let's say you did, you found out where that problem is coming from. Never say that you found out for sure. Uh, never say it was 100% because there could be a second issue and that could be one of a few things that are wrong. So just in terms of managing uh, residents' expectations, because they want this thing to be found and they want you to find it and fix it. And that's it, they don't want to hear anything else. So you'll be tempted to say oh I found it oh this is it and then next thing you know it's not it there's something else and then your credibility could be could be hurt by that or at least diminished a little bit so you always want to keep that 
Um, and it also looks very professional if you're able to say, look, uh, we found it. We think this is the issue. We're pretty sure, but it could be uh, something else. So let's open, keep open that possibility. And that I think is, a, is an important step in uh, elevating your, your professional level, elevating your professionalism because you're able to step back from your emotions, which are able, which want to scream out, I found it. Because we all want to jump up when we find a, the source of a, of a, of a problem. We want to jump up and say, yeah, we found it. But um, you want to refrain from that, hold that inside when you talk to the resident or whoever is affected by this. The next step is to prepare. Right? What are the tools that you need? What are the materials that you need? Most likely, you're going to have to protect things because you may have to break open a piece of the wall may have to take out the medicine cabinet. Um, so you want to be prepared to bring the proper tools, a screwdriver, uh, tape, and um, plastic sheeting to cover things, uh, a drywall saw, or and, and some other things to, to break open the ceiling. You want to bring a moisture meter. With that moisture meter, you're able to verify those symptoms and to say, okay, he's still experiencing a wet, a, a leak that's causing this wet area. Um, so those are one of the tools that you definitely want to bring. A flashlight. I always say bring your flashlight. I brought my trusty flashlight here if I can find it. Oh, and also some granola bars. You might get hungry during the troubleshooting. It may take, you know, a few minutes. It may take uh, most likely not a few minutes, but it may take, uh, you know, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour, but it may take longer. So bring a little bit of snacks in case, bring some water, uh, have my flashlight here, bring a flashlight. You definitely need to bring this flashlight. Otherwise you won't be able to, it's it's gonna be harder for you to see if there's a slow leak someplace, uh, any problems like that happen. When you go into a troubleshooting, you wanna have a clear mind. You wanna clear all the prejudice that you have inside your head, um, meaning that you may go in and think that you know the answer, but that those are the times that you may have something called tunnel vision, where you think that's it, and you're not gonna stop until you prove that that's the source. That wastes time, that could really uh, tire you out, exhaust you if, it, if it's not the source, and um, it can impact your morale. Because we all need to keep our morale up when we're, when we're troubleshooting, because we don't want to be let down. We don't want to be frustrated. Sometimes when you're frustrated, it's you got to let it go and just come back another day. So you want to have an open mind. Um, you want to be patient because you, you may not, you may have to wait for the symptoms to show up, right? You may have to wait for, for the same thing that's causing the problem to cause that again, right? So you need to have patience. Look at this fresh. And one of the things that I like to do to keep keep an open mind is bring another person with you. And the reason for this is that it helps you keep an open mind. It helps you, um, it's always great to have another person to bat an idea off of. And especially if he's experienced, he'll be a such a valuable second opinion for you. And it's also great because when you're doing something like a water test and you need someone to turn on the water in a different apartment and you're watching below with a flashlight, it really helps just to kind of call him or radio him and tell him that, you know, a leak started to turn it off. Also, if you're what's called replicate, replicating, if you're replicating the, the leak or the emergency, in case something goes wrong, you definitely want another person around. So always think of having two people. When it comes to charging, um, also, it's okay to tell your customer that two people are needed for this and that you'll be charging accordingly. Um, the benefit is, of course, to the building because it's better to have someone around who can stop an emergency as you're, you know, let's say replicating the, the trying to replicate the leak and you have a lot of water that comes down. It's better to have someone upstairs to shut that off. Or if you can in a smaller building where the resident or board member wants to take part in helping you, then by all means, um, that's great too. But having another professional around or ha having another colleague in the industry around is invaluable just because they're able to keep you from having a closed 
uh, mind or closed thinking. It helps open up your mind when you have a different person who's able to help you um, go through the list of things that could be wrong. So your job when you go into the apartment is going to be to replicate the leak. So when you're in the apartment, your job is to cause more, more uh, replicate the problem, in this case the leak. But your job when you go into a troubleshooting is to essentially replicate or repeat that problem that's that's causing that grief. You're going to be uh, trying to get that problem to happen again so that you can understand where that problem comes from. So in the case of a leak, you're going to be going upstairs, right? And you're going to be replicating that, trying to make that leak happen again. You're going to turn on the fixtures. You're going to turn on the water. Sometimes you can do, depending uh, on the approach, you can do what's called a shotgun approach where you turn on all the fixtures at once. Or what you do is you turn on one thing at a time, the shower at a time, see if it leaks below. You would use the shotgun approach and turn everything on if, let's say, you have multiple apartments, multiple uh, different areas that you're trying to check if where the water is coming from, right? So if you have three apartments above you and you don't know which one, you can use the shotgun approach just to do all the fixtures so that you eliminate the apartments. Um, but when you narrowed it down to that apartment, you're going to narrow it down to that fixture or to that problem, right? When you... uh, the leak that we're going to go into is a building in, uh, on, in the West Village. So these are old buildings. Some of them, some apartments have been meant, renovated in these buildings, but not a lot. So this could be one of the older pipings. It could be coming from the shower. We try to have all the apartments uh, accessible to us so that we can we can go in, test it. Uh, it's, that's why it's important to have everyone coordinated to give access at the same time, especially if you're gonna be inconveniencing people to stay home for this. You wanna get them at one time, right? And in this case, we're gonna go in and we're gonna try to find out where, where this is coming from. We have three apartments that we got access to um, aside from the main apartment where we're getting the damage. And so hopefully we find this. And uh, if you can find it, and you're in a building that uh, will will pay you extra additional income for this, you've earned it, my friend. You've earned it. Pat yourself on the back. Okay. Take care. Signing off. Talk to you soon. Okay. So, is there a light here? Somewhere? So we're here at the West Village and uh, we already, uh, we're, we've already seen the symptoms of this leak, right? The leak was the, like a dampness and, and they said that the water had fallen down and uh, leaked into this apartment, uh, into this bathroom and um, sort of kind of took over this entire area. It also leaked behind the, um, medicine cabinet here so all that is residue from the leak right mm -hmm. and uh so this is actually in a way uh and what had happened was just to tell you the sequence of the events here they had seen the water come down it's a newly renovated apartment so they had opened up the walls they just built that they just put that wall in that ceiling in um, everything here is pretty new and all of a sudden when they finished everything um, and everything was was ready to go for someone to move in. I guess somewhere along the way, recently they they started to get experience uh, a water leak, and you can see from from over here that uh, it kind of dribbled down this way. Um, you can you can see that uh, of course that area that was opened up, um, the one that's the area towards the fan, was the area that um, caused. I guess that that's the area that. Uh, had uh, evidence of a leak, you know, you had damaged plaster there. The water, I think they said that it came through the, the fan as well, right? Yeah. So the water came dripping down to the fan. So the symptoms were just water dribbling down, eventually it caused this damage and they felt they saw the bubbling and the, the plaster get wet. And uh, after it gets wet and dries, it sort of peels off like the blisters and peels and uh, Angel, I'm here with Angel, by the way. So Angel is the uh, an amazing uh, 
uh, superintendent, but also a extraordinary um, talented uh, person in the construction field, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so he. The reason why that's important is because uh, Angel has an extensive background in, um, in construction, renovation, and he knows plumbing and electrical um, from that field, which he transferred over here into the uh, uh, the super industry, and, and all of that stuff is transferable. So he's able to uh, troubleshoot more effectively because he knows um, already when he came in how the pipes run. Um, uh, what kind of uh, utilities lines are behind the wall, which allows him also to make effective troubleshooting decisions. So, um, so anyway, so we're up here, and let me see if uh, I can. Uh, here it goes. So, Angel opened the wall over here, and he was able to. Um, I guess whenever you get a water leak, the most effective way to find out where it's coming from is to open up the hole yes. and uh, just pull back all of the all of the things that are that you can behind the ceiling uh, and the walls to try to get an idea of where this water is coming from so um, the first thing was he saw the symptoms second thing was in order to see the symptoms better he had to open up the walls um, the ceiling and in this case luckily the ceiling or the surface that he cut open is um, is not a uh, marble or, or or anything that could be expensive to put together it's only sheet rock so once he's inside the wall um, he's going to be better able to tell where this problem is coming from um, so uh, he opened it up where the water was falling uh, so the water was falling around here and he cut open the hole over there and um, let's go and so uh, you know one of the things that we can it's kind of easier in this situation is that when the water leak came down into the bathroom uh, there's another bathroom straight upstairs so that you know sorts sort of uh, simplifies things although you know you can't close your mind to other possibilities but in this case you have a bathtub that's uh, right above here. So you have a bathtub down here and right above it is a bathtub, another bathtub. So of the apartment upstairs, you have apartment upstairs. You have a, this is the A line. So you have a apartment that's down this way. You have apartment below. Um, so you know where the possible leaks are coming from. Um, so you have a bathtub up here. You see the, the drain line over there. Um, you see some evidence of a water leak right up there. Um, it's against the brick wall, the exterior wall. So it's interesting that you have uh, some water over there. You have some water damage along this joist. Uh, and so you take a look around and you see what evidence there are and Angel had already pulled back this insulation which is very tricky because when it soaks up a lot of water you really have no idea where it's where the water is coming from because it's like a sponge so he pulled that away and uh, kind of just opened up the space over here and you can see actually I'm not sure if you can see it but uh, you can see that there is a cavity behind there and you see the uh, inside chase of the of the of the area between the apartments. So there's another apartment on the other side here. This is, I'll, I'll draw the picture of how it, how it looks, but this uh, bathtub, the pipe seems to be going all the way over to that side where, to the other side, which is the B line. So we're in the A line now. There's a B line, which is back to back apartments, uh, which is on the other side. So we just get down here. And uh, what we have here is, uh, okay, so I guess just to make this uh, pretty easy, one of, one of the interesting things here before we go upstairs is uh, the next step is once we've, we, we've opened up the hole, we've identified the possible sources because there's an apartment upstairs, right? 
Mm-hmm. Uh, directly upstairs, the bathroom. We're thinking that it's probably the bathroom upstairs, right? Angel? Yeah. That's okay. Cool. Um, but that's the first thing you look at. And once you have a bathroom above, that's where you're expecting, you know, the leaks come from. So. Right. And we're just going to jump ahead because actually we did that troubleshooting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and actually two plumbers were brought in here. Yes. And they, um, two plumbers were brought in here and they ended up uh, not being able to find it, right? Yeah. Um, what ended up happening was uh, uh, two, two sets of plumbers came in. These are licensed professional plumbers. And they did the troubleshooting from above. And uh, they weren't able to find what the problem was, right? No. So they said that it they they said that it was coughing around the bathtub. So they're doing the right thing. They're going from simple. What what's the obvious, right? Mm-hmm. What's the obvious source? The easiest thing to solve. They saw gaps in that in that uh, bathtub, and then they coughed around it. Yes. And uh, then it still leaked. So the process of illumination. If that doesn't work, you try something else. Mm-hmm. But the second set came in and said that it was also coughing around the bathtub, right? Yeah. So they kind of said the same thing. The same thing, yes. And then uh, what ended up happening was that we got the uh, call uh, that there was a uh, the leak was continuing in this in this area. So the first thing we're going to do is we checked the apartment above. Right. So, mm-hmm. what's, Angel had an idea on uh, what's the next plan over here for you, well, for you? Why are we here today? Well, the reason is that we are here again is because you just mentioned that it's a we got a call. There's a continual leaking in there. So now we're gonna do another water test from the A line first and see if we can find you know. Uh, where the leaks come from, which we are guessing right now, that this might come from from the walls on the, on the west side wall of the bottom. That's what we're going to do today. If that's not the case, then we got to go into the B line, which is like you said, back to back uh, bottoms there. So it might be the leaks come from that. Uh, from the other side. So on the side. On the other side of the, here is another uh, set of apartments that go yes. up, mm-hmm. and you have an apartment that mirrors this one right it kind yes, of mirrors this mirrors one, one. Yes. on the other side and then there's another apartment above so on the apartment above there's another apartment that mirrors that side and there's a chase there's the a middle. chase in there so the possibility is the world traveling to that chase it is high so we are going to do this water test on both bottoms saying yeah, we're looking forward to find the source of the leak. Right, That's so we're, we're going to try the, the B line now, right? Yeah. Because two plumbers could not find that the apartment right above was causing the leak down here. Mm-hmm. So Angel's idea is that because uh, these are back-to-back bathrooms and they share, do they share a, dra- a drain? Yeah, they, 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 share, yeah they, they do share the main stack. So basically, these these two bathrooms and two separate apartments back to back are tied together by a single drain drain that goes up the middle in in that chase, and it's the chase is what we just saw up there. We actually peeked into the chase behind the underneath of the bathtub, the area that no one sees. We saw that chase there. So having the chase be all the way over there. Um, there's a possibility that that water leak is coming from the B line apartment, yes. which is on the other side. Um, it's so the first thing we're going to do is go inside apartment five, 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 five B, five B. You know what? I think four B is here. If the water is coming down from five B, because five A didn't produce the loot. I mean, the leak. four, no, four B. They didn't report any leak. Right, but they would get a leak if the water came might, down, right? Yeah. We could check since they're here, yeah, yeah. and then we could go to um, we can go to five uh, B and run the test. Yeah. Okay. Let's go. We, we can actually ask. Yeah. Ooh. I don't know if that's the bone. 
Oh, wait, I think I have a key. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I'm not going to it, so. You didn't like it? Oh, you, maybe you should hold on to it. <laughs> the other thing is, when no one's in the apartment, don't lose the key. Because uh, if you lose the key, the key yeah. and you lock it inside, Okay, so I'm gonna go upstairs to Crystal. Do you wanna show me to uh pictures? Okay. I'm gonna be downstairs. I'll put you on the phone so that you just tell me what you're running. Yeah. Um do you want to run everything together one time or yeah, separate? I'm gonna go one at a time. Okay, so perfect. The first thing is I'm gonna do is the top. And then I'm going to run the, the water on the top first. If we don't see no water there, yeah. so then I'm going to run some water around the, on the edges of the top. The top on should. The shower, right? right, because the top, just judging from where that water was coming from, mm -hmm. if it is coming into the downstairs on the other side of the chase, most likely it's the fixture that's so most closest that's to that closest wall, to the wall yeah. which is the bathtub. So yeah. that may be the. The, the culprit. Mm -hmm. You're going to run that. I'll have you on radio so that it makes it easier for, for us to communicate. Or on the phone, I'm yeah. sorry. Okay? Okay. And, Thank um, you. Yeah. Angel, I'm going to call you first, okay? Okay. So it's a lot easier uh, to uh, have another person help you in this troubleshooting because they can actually uh, test the different fi fixtures that you need them to test. You have an extra hand, you have an extra eye, you may miss something, like I almost locked myself out of the apartment. Then you would have had to uh, find a way to get into the apartment. It's another set of headaches that you want to avoid. So we kind of look out for each other, keep the doors open, you know. Um, so let me, let me call Angel and then we're going to Check what's going on here. And if you don't have a radio, you could do uh, a phone. Hey, hey, Angel, I'm downstairs. Yeah. Are you ready? Someone's still running the water. Yep, I'm ready. L let me, yep, I'm ready. Put on the top first, okay? Okay. <laughs> So Angel is now running the most obvious. We've, we've located, we've kind of listed the possible sources. Whoops. And we have, we listed the possible sources. Uh, no, keep on going though. Uh, keep on going. Maybe run the shower too? Okay. Run in the shower now. Okay. But you don't see no water yet, right? No, but uh, keep it running for a while. Let's give it like 20 minutes. I can do the, the top as well, and then I'll get to the main stack. So I'll do something. Hey, uh, Angel, maybe, maybe while you're there, just because we, we don't want to bother Crystal again. Uh, maybe throw, maybe to, uh, flush the toilet bowl and do a couple of things so, over there while you're there. I, I just flushed the toilet and I'm running the kitchen sink now. Because I, I know that uh, having, her, having Crystal come back and, and stay at the apartment is going to be a little rough. So uh, we're going to try to get everything done at, at, uh, at this time because we know her, her uh, situation. And uh, I think what we're doing, I'm also doing right now, Angel, is I'm, I'm trying to listen for anything. I don't hear any any pitter patter. I don't hear any drips. I don't I don't see anything. I don't hear anything. I don't smell anything. Let me check my. Uh, already, I'm looking on the connection of the kitchen sink drain line as well. Yep. I have to look fine. Everything's fine. Okay. No issues. So this is where the 
kitchen is upstairs, maybe closer to here. So the drain line behind the wall is here. And uh, we just want to be able to see if there's anything else that we see here that... Is the toilet on the same side as, um, as the apartment below? Okay, that makes it easier too. It just it just seems like it's not the case the toilet because the water is so much over to the other side, you know? Yes, yes, yes. But the thing is like see if there was an issue from here, we over every day want to see water from running from this side and you know from the top and sink. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. But if we run the sink for something, did see. they run this? They should have run that sink before. You want to open up the? Yeah. See, someone took a shower here today, right? Sink today, right? Yeah, but, they, wet. but there's no water down there. Yeah. Ah, boy, this is. There's a skylight here. You know, I may want to just check the roof out while you do this. Mm -hmm. Why don't you run it? And I'm just going to check the, is, is, is there a key needed for the roof? Yeah. Oh, there is? Yeah. There's no damages up here, right? There's no damages here. Yeah, I don't see no, because see the top, it has a, it has a, it has a lip. Yeah. Unless this one doesn't have, but you see the crack in there? Right. Apparently they did fix this, but you see the cracks right there. Yeah. Unless that's what's really causing the issue. You know, I don't think so. Because it's not so wet downstairs at all. Yeah. And look, there's no, uh, like the overflow maybe. Okay, let me go that back downstairs. Uh, let me go upstairs real quick to the roof. He works. Yeah, it looks like somebody opened it. Just to take a look. The other source is we're having a little bit of a difficult time. This is the bat this is the uh, the skylight for the apartment below. You have water pooling here, and it kind of comes down. And this is the. Uh, there is a pool of water that gathers here. You can see that there's water kind of comes down, settles here. Um, this is open. So the skylight is open. Uh, you have uh, an opening, so uh, you know, whenever you have a water coming inside the building, it's always a possibility that it's coming in from the skylight. And you have here a, a a window that's partially open. I don't know. We'll ask her when she's opened this because and then look in there. It looks like unfinished wood. Um, and I'm wondering. And this shouldn't have any issues, but who knows? It's not sealed correctly. Maybe go inside. Who knows? We'll have this open as a possibility. So we we've, we've seen the symptoms. We've identified the sources, potential sources, by walking around. I think it's not probable, but uh, but uh, definitely could be something. So we're back in the B line apartment. Ah, so awesome. Okay, let's go back down. over here which is really weird it's partially open on the outside uh-huh i love that yeah i'm yeah. just wondering whether it's possible for that water to get inside and come down the because it's right up against this chase right mm -hmm. the only thing is like uh remember the last week uh, 
when didn't that rain. happened was not right. I know, I know. Well, you're doing the right thing. So you're you're filling up the th I'm the uh, sink, the, the overflow, letting the, the overflow, sink. yeah, and making sure that the overflow may mm -hmm. not be a reason. Let me go on downstairs. Let me catch yeah, this. Yeah, okay. Just uh, so um, so when uh, the water came down, what, what what did you have turned on? I'm just working on the top right now. Oh, okay, perfect, perfect. But what did you, uh, what were you focusing on? Okay, I did two things, okay? So I throw a lot of water into, you know, the spout area. Okay. So I'm not sure if that's where the water started going. And then I shut it off that, and then I start just running the shower only. Ah, uh, okay, okay. All right, so run the shower only. Um, but it might be the, uh, you let the water go up to the uh, closer, right? The, the bathtub closer where... No, no, I just throw some water into the, you know, just collect water in the bath. Yeah. And throw water into the, into the spout. Okay. So let me run just a shower, okay? And you, if you can, then let me know if there is water there. Okay. All right. I'm running the shower now. Uh, you're running just a shower, right? Yeah, just a shower. Okay. Yeah, now it's coming a lot. Now it's coming. Now it's coming a lot. It's coming a lot. Yeah. Assume that the plumbers have taken care of this bathtub in its entirety. So you you can see that there you go. That's the overflow. But you, the the assumption was that the plumbers have taken care of that uh, bathtub right upstairs. If two plumbers came, they should have ran that tub uh, and hit and, and included the overflow, testing the overflow in that bathtub. We assume that they did. Now we're finding out that uh, most likely it did not. Hey Angel! Yeah, the water stopped, right? Yep, the water stopped now. Great work. Alright, we know what the problem is. We know what the problem is. It says if you feel the water, you know, the person's inside the tub taking a bath. So if the water fills up to this line where it's marked, so definitely the water will do this. Right. So it start going into the, going into to that. the overflow. So that's what the problem is. Gotcha. Okay. So that's how the water gets inside and that's what's causing all that. Yeah. Okay. So it could be taking a shower as well. And then uh, if you if you're standing up right against it, that water goes down as well. Yes. So um, it seems like it was the overflow and I'm just a little bit disappointed because um, uh, plumbers should have covered that part of the tub um, when they did their troubleshooting and they should always remember to check that that's, you know, that's another uh, area um, that could get compromised, meaning that it could get um, damaged or something could happen to it that could cause water to go down because that's sort of in the direct line of water because it's going to get splashed whether you take a bath or whether you take a shower that water's going to come down so the plumber should have hit that but you know i mean it is what it is what happened during this troubleshooting was that we went up to the other apartments that weren't uh, covered by the plumbers who had come here to troubleshoot so we, we assumed that the trouble the plumbers licensed plumbers had done a thorough troubleshooting 
and had done um, had gone you know done all the tests in the apartment above. And what we did was we decided to go into the other apartments, which is okay. But uh, we've been here about an hour and a half, so I think one way that we to cut it down is maybe uh, have that apartment above be the first uh, source of test. That means that we come in with a fresh eye, even though two sets of plumbers have been there already. We come in with a fresh eye and we assume that they missed something and we run the test again. Um, then we would have found it. But one good thing is that, as I think out loud, you want to eliminate as many problems as you can. So in this case, because we're inconveniencing a few apartments and we're coordinating them, to open the door and give us access at the same time for this troubleshooting, you want to knock them out as well because there might be a secondary source. If we didn't check the other apartments uh, the first time, on the first when we first started troubleshooting, you should definitely check the other apartments that you had on your list just to make sure that they're not part of the, uh, the problem. Maybe there's another source there you don't know. Um, one of the things that you know I don't like about finding the problem too soon is that you immediately dismiss um, other other possible sources. So if we would have found this first leak first and then we went into the other apartments, we would have probably halved it um, because we found it first. We're, we're assuming that that's the main problem. But in this case, I'm fairly confident that those apartments are not part of this problem. I'm fairly confident that it's the it's this apartment that, uh, the, the apartment that we, we last checked that is the issue. We got the water to come out in large amounts, large volumes. It was replicated a few times here. And so we know that that's, that's, that's the issue. Remember this, when you have uh, all these people, different people coordinated to give, to give you access and participate at the same time, uh, you just wanna make sure you go ahead and do everything anyway. Do it anyway, just go through with it, hit, hit all the things that you were gonna hit and uh, take your time because assume that that's the only time that you have there and um and then that's it okay take care